Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks so I can talk about the types of incels, pickup artists, and the relationship between the two groups. So an incel is a term used to describe people who are involuntary celibate. And sometimes we see the term involuntarily celibate. Now, interestingly, celibate means not being married. But the way the word celibate's used in the term incel is not being physically intimate, so not having sex. Technically, an incel can be male or female, but the term usually refers to a male who wants a physical relationship with a female. Now, in the research literature, we don't see a definition for incel that's agreed upon, but one definition we do see would be someone who's unable to find a willing partner for at least six months. So this individual can be married or partnered, but usually that's not how we think of it. Usually the person is thought of as single. Now, most people who are celibate are voluntary celibates, right? So a lot of the research that we do have available really deals with celibacy in general and not specifically involuntary celibacy. When looking at celibates in general, we see a few different things in the research literature. We see that they tend to have low extroversion, they tend to be ambitious, and they tend to have parents who married or became partnered later in life. Again, talking about voluntary and involuntary celibates together in one group. Additionally, we see that females who are celibate tend to be highly educated and have good jobs, and males who are celibate tend to be unemployed or in a lower class economically. So how about those who are involuntarily celibate, so the incels? Here we see three types. Virginal, single, and partnered. So starting with virginal, as the name would suggest, individuals in this category have never had sex. And they tend to be younger than the incels we see in the other two groups, single and partnered. Over 90% of virginal celibates have never dated, so it's not just the lack of physical intimacy. We see that not dating is remarkably common with this group as well. And usually when we talk about incels, when we use the term like in the popular culture, we're really talking about this type. We're really talking about virginal celibates. This type also tends to have the more extreme positions that we see as part of the incel community. Now moving to the single type, we see here that over 50% have never dated. So quite a bit different than what we see with the over 90% in the virginal celibate category. They tend to be somewhat better adjusted, and some identify as incels as we think about that term in the popular culture. So most incels, as we would think about the term, would come from the virginal celibate category, and some come from the single celibate category. So that leaves us with the partnered celibate group. This group tends to be older than members of both of the other categories. 70% of partnered celibates started out with a satisfactory relationship, but then we see this transformation to being in a relationship with no physical intimacy. So with this group, they have a partner, they're married or partnered, but there's no sexual activity. Now people in this category, of course, could leave the relationship, but many don't. They don't leave because of children, they don't leave because of commitment, there may be money issues. We see that over 80% of people in this category have thought about leaving the relationship, but also more than 80% have no plans to leave. People in this category almost never refer to themselves as an incel, right? So again, we use the term incel, we're really talking about virginal and single, and we're not talking about partnered celibates. So now getting into more detail in terms of the term incel, I'm going to divide the three types into two categories here. Again, what we popularly think of as incel, which would be the first two types, virginal and single, and then I'll talk about partnered as separate. With all of the incels here, I am talking about males, right? So I'm not getting into female incels, that's a whole other area, which does exist, but it's beyond the scope of this video. So when looking at these first two types, we see that incels usually express themselves online. And the central attitude behind this philosophy or ideology would be that sex is a basic human right, and they are being denied that, and therefore they're being treated unfairly. They believe that they're aware of the truth. They use the term red pill from the Matrix, so we see in the movie Matrix that the protagonist has this choice between 
a red pill and a blue pill. The red pill exposes the truth, and the blue pill leaves him trapped in a delusion. So they believe that they're finding some truth, that they've consumed the red pill, and they know something that the rest of society really doesn't know. They tend to have a proclivity for personal attacks. They hold men as being superior to women. And a lot of times we see a general hatred of women. We also sometimes see threats against women. The incel community has adopted its own language, like terms. So, for example, an attractive female is referred to as a Stacy. An attractive male is referred to as a Chad. And incels refer to themselves as beta males, as compared to alpha males. So, in general, they would look at an alpha male as somebody who's able to obtain sex, and a beta male is somebody who may be able to provide resources. So, both could find partners, but they provide different things. Now, with the theory of the incel community, a woman is always going to desire the alpha male. So, essentially, beta males always lose. Even if a beta male is in a relationship with a female, that female is still thinking about the alpha male. Again, this is what the incel community kind of promotes as their ideology. So when we look at this term beta masculinity, that's what we're really talking about here, the difference between the alpha male and the beta male. And sometimes we also see the term toxic masculinity, so a need to aggressively compete and dominate others, and hypermasculinity. But really, all these things are not the same construct. There's a lot of overlap, but they're not the same thing. And one of the problems would be that none of them are really well defined. None of the terms have single agreed upon definitions. Now, the incel community has not been effective at organizing around one message. This really isn't surprising. So we see a lot of divisions in the community. And some of these divisions are really highlighted in the relationships with the pickup artist that I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, sometimes we also see the term geek is thrown into this. But geeks are really quite different than incels. Geek males embrace some of the aspects we talk about with hypermasculinity, like emphasizing intellect over emotion, but they don't subscribe to others, like sexual or sporting prowess, right? So geek males are really quite different than incels. Now, I talked about the incel community is largely alive, so to speak, online, not really in person. And this is interesting because they believe that online dating actually contributed to their situation. Online dating caused an overemphasis on physical attractiveness and really essentially created a marketplace that trades in just this one commodity. So personality characteristics and other resources are just lost. It's all about that initial attraction, which of course is based, again, on physical attraction. There are also some interesting dynamics around how the incel community formed online and how it's maintained. So I think that this online community really leads people who are part of the community to believe that there are more of them than there really are. So we see that by spreading links and reposting articles that support their ideology, they've really been able to spread their message to a large group, but not really that large compared to how many people there are in society, right? So they have this idea that they're really popular, that a lot of people believe what they believe, and there's some reasons for them to believe that, but they're really not. They really do have a minority opinion kind of packaged as a majority opinion. Now, we see that they have hopes of a rebellion that will never happen, the so-called beta uprising. But individuals, of course, could still be dangerous. And we have seen some unfortunate examples of this, where incels have engaged in violent activity. But no uprising is really logistically possible for their group. So they're kind of hanging on to this fantasy of their way of thinking becoming extremely popular. So now taking a look at the personality characteristics, and again, I'm still talking about males in the first two types, virginal and single celibates. We see generally low openness to experience, low conscientiousness, low extroversion, not surprising, low agreeableness, and high neuroticism. Some would fall in the category of vulnerable narcissism, Many would have low resilience and low frustration tolerance. In terms of mental health, we could see any type of mental health characteristic or the absence of mental health characteristics. But in general, mental disorders that would be overrepresented in this group would be autism spectrum disorder, major depressive disorder, persistent depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, and agoraphobia. So now moving to the partnered type. 
again, still talking about males, but these individuals would still technically be in cells. Now, the partnered cell bits are much different. We see mid to low openness to experience, mid-range conscientiousness. Still, we see the low extroversion, but we see mid to high agreeableness and high neuroticism. So some of the areas match and some don't. We see that the partnered cell bits really have no association with extreme views. They don't believe there's going to be some sort of rebellion. And many don't have any particular dislike for women. We see an absence of a vigorous online community. Some of the support they get could be online and some could be in person. But again, we don't see this kind of vigorous online community like we see with the first two types of incels. There would be an increased likelihood of seeing cluster C personality pathology, so avoidant, dependent, and obsessive compulsive personality disorders. But generally, this type, the partnered celibates, would not have a strong association with mental disorders. Now looking at all types together, and again still talking about males, we do see a tendency to be socially awkward and have a negative body image. We see individuals who often think of themselves as unattractive. They think people would be repulsed by them. So they end up avoiding social situations because of this. So we see this kind of chain of events that occurs that ends up with them avoiding these different social situations. We also see that the incel community tends to have a lower income, no place of their own, and they tend to work in male-dominated fields. Now, all these things really make sense. They don't have the same access to women as other groups because of some of these dynamics. Many incels feel like they are off time. And what this means is they feel like they have not kept up with the typical progression of their cohort. So their opportunity has passed. Other people are having physically intimate relationships, and they're not. So they've just kind of gone off the path that they would have expected. So now moving over to the pickup artist. I've covered the three types of incels. We'll take a look at these so-called pickup artists. So here we see that these individuals are men who attempt to seduce women. They're not the same thing as incels. Pickup artists are completely different than incels. With pickup artists, we see the dark triad traits, typically. Narcissism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism. So pickup artists are often arrogant, manipulative. They demonstrate superficial charm. So they seem charming, but it's only at first glance. They're not really deep or sensitive. It's all just on the surface. We also see they're socially dominant. They tend to be strategic. And of course, they're antisocial. Additionally, we see characteristics like being immature, unsophisticated, and transparent. And we see this evidenced in a lot of the techniques they tend to use. They use helpers to try to gain an advantage in terms of appearing attractive. They point out flaws in a woman to make her feel more vulnerable. In theory, this gives them some sort of advantage. They tend to be confident, as I mentioned before. They maintain eye contact fairly well, and they pretend to be interested in long-term relationships. They make themselves appear wealthy, and they try to appear special, which is interesting because this is one of the characteristics of narcissism. So, for example, we see they try to use some sort of unique clothing device, right? So they'll try to dress in a way that makes them stand out from other people. So the essential mission of a pickup artist is to create an attraction, make the woman feel comfortable, and gain her trust. In theory, this can lead to seduction. Now, most of the techniques that they use are technically legal, but some techniques are aggressive and illegal. When it comes to pickup artists, we kind of see the characteristics express mostly in one of two ways. The narcissistic, shallow, empty, and crude way I talked about before, but also a method designed to help people overcome anxiety. So a fake it until you make it type of idea. So somebody might approach this certain set of strategies with the idea that they can build their confidence. They can improve in other areas, not just what they can obtain in terms of physical relationships. And of course, this is rarely a successful way to approach overcoming anxiety. Now, the pickup artist strategy in general is essentially pseudoscientific nonsense, right? We see a lack of insight by the people that use this strategy. Any success, as they call it, that they might have is based on deception and manipulation. It doesn't teach somebody how to date. It doesn't teach somebody how to gain true intimacy. And it doesn't teach somebody how to establish a genuine relationship. So again, it's just an empty 
and shallow set of strategies. So this brings me to the odd relationship we see between the pickup artist and the incel community, a relationship that emphasizes how the incel community is not homogeneous. For some in the incel community, they reject the pickup artist as chads, right? So men doing something that they can't do. There's resentment there. And this kind of makes sense based on the two ideologies. For others, though, in the incel community, the pickup artists become heroes. And the pickup artists are aware of this. They exploit the incel community. They create these courses and they teach the incel community how to be pickup artists. And of course, they charge them money for this. So essentially, the pickup artists have become role models, which of course is not productive. It forms a parasitic relationship. If incels had the ability to be pickup artists, they would already be doing it, right? So the pickup artist might be able to teach certain techniques or tricks, but none of that is going to make a meaningful change in the personality of the incels. So that's my summary of the three types of incels, the pickup artist, and the relationship between the two communities. I know whenever I talk about topics like this, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of incels and pickup artists to be interesting. Thanks for watching.